Hi everyone, I'm Cheryl and welcome to the Sewing Room Channel and this is your tip of the week. This is panel fabric and if you've been watching me for a while you know I love to work with panel fabric because it's so easy to work with it all. Now this is a panel that has just all of these squares on it and in each square a little bit different picture and then of course it repeats itself again. When you're working with panel fabric like this, you need to understand that when you go to cut out your squares, they're not always going to be perfectly square. On panel fabric, when you go to cut your squares out, you can do one of two things. You can pre-wash it, dry it, and then press it. But when you're pressing it, be very careful you don't stretch the fabric because you will distort it. So to give you an example how unsquare these are, I'm going to put the edge of my ruler right along this line. And you can see if you come up here that it's uneven over here. It's a little even uneven up here. And it's not exactly a seven inch square because on this side, it's also uneven. So if I try to straighten the ruler out so that it hits the edges here, I have the same problem. It's all uneven. So when you're cutting out fabric like this, my advice is to go out one quarter inch around all edges. And it might be three eighths of an inch on one edge and a quarter inch on another. Because when you're cutting them out, you need that extra seam allowance. So go ahead and cut it along there. Every square needs to be cut exactly the same size. If it is not, you're going to have problems when you begin to put your sashing on. So sashing are strips that frame your block. So pretend this is one of those squares that I was showing you previously. You can either have your sashing go all the way across the top and then along the sides. You can also put something in called cornerstones. So here's how you would go about figuring out what size your sashing strips need to be and the size of your cornerstones. So here's the block. So whatever square size you cut it, let's say seven and a half inches, then your strips need to be seven and a half inches long. And most sashing strips are two and a half inches. That doesn't mean it has to be, but that's the average. So you would cut your sashing strip seven and a half inches long by two and a half inches wide. Now your cornerstones, whatever the width of your sashing is, which is two and a half, would be the size of your squares, two and a half inch square. When you go to assemble everything, this is kind of the order you would do it in. You would lay out your strips for the first row, which is nothing but cornerstone and sashing strips. You put them together. Then you stitch your blocks and the sashing strips in between each block. So you've got one and two. To build row three, you repeat this one and down here. And then row four, repeat this one and put it down there. You would keep doing that till you get your quilt to the size you want. To add a border on, if you're not sure what color it should be, Look at the colors in your block. Now all the colors in here are dull and muted. So you want to pick fabric that's dull and muted. And this is. This is a very dull brown. It's not a real vibrant brown. So this would go well as a border. Now for cornerstones, let's look at a couple of fabrics. You could have this yellow which would really make some of the colors really pop out because some of the blocks have a little bit of yellow in it. Or you could use this as your cornerstones. I like the yellow because I like bright colors. So you could do any one of, of these combinations. 
This is a Christmas wall hanging I made probably over 25 years ago. And it used to hang on my wall every Christmas. That's because I had a home where I had a good wall to put it on. Where I live now, I don't have that. So I drag it out every now and then and look at it. But let's take a closer look at the block. This is the block that was on the panel fabric. And what this quilt is telling is this the night before Christmas story. Where I got this fabric, I don't know. I found it in my stash one day. I had no idea where it came from. But I decided to turn it into an attic window quilt block because when you look through the attic window, you feel like you're looking in to a house, into a room of a house. Now, if you're interested in making this quilt block, I do have a tutorial on it and there will be a link listed below your YouTube screen. But on each side of the block, the whole block here, I put one inch sashing, no cornerstones, because I just wanted the attic window block to really pop out. Your border fabric is very important. It is the picture frame of your quilt. And I wanted one that really did look like a picture frame. So I found some very unique fabric that I haven't seen again. So up in this corner, what I did was I did a mitered corner here so that this pattern would be continuous. If I would put a block up here, a square, it would have broken this picture frame up and I didn't want to do that. So here is the fabric. It was very unusual because this border, normally when you have it on your fabric like this, it's on both selvage edges. But on this particular fabric, it wasn't. I don't know why, but this is how it is. So what I did was I cut this fabric, this edge off, and used it as my border fabric. Now again, you can't get this fabric. It was a very long time ago. So when you're shopping for fabric, again, look for panel fabric because you can find fabrics like this that have borders on it. This is just continuous rows. So you could cut these rows off and place them on your quilt. Now here's another one, same thing, just it repeats itself. So you could select any section of this and use it as a border. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tip of the week and that you learned something new. Now, I've done a lot of panel fabric quilts, especially for fall and Christmas. So check below your YouTube screen for links to some of those quilts. There will also be links to my other sewing tips of the week. They're very educational. You will learn a lot because I cover every aspect of sewing. Now don't forget to follow me on Instagram and check out my Facebook page. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time and happy sewing. If you like the Sewing Room channel, one of the best ways to show your support is to subscribe by clicking on that red subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. And don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. And make sure you click on the bell so you receive notifications for all my new videos. I'm Cheryl, this is Manny, and this is Scotty. See you next time.